Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to demonstrate simulation of Perturb and Observe MPPT for Solar PV Array with Boost Converter in MATLAB Simulink. In case you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to it so that you'll be getting the videos that we post regularly. Alright, let's get into our topic for today. This is the MATLAB model of Perturb and Observe MPPT for Solar PV Array with Boost Converter. So MPPT stands for Maximum Power Point Tracking. It is basically a technique in order to achieve maximum power from the Solar PV Array system that is being designed so that you'll be getting maximum efficiency with respect to the system there are various algorithms some of them are incremental conductance and perturb and observe so incremental conductance MPPT algorithm uh, is already explained in one of our previous videos in case you haven't watched it please do watch it it will be available in the end screen as well as in the description so uh, what is this model all about let us try to understand bit by bit so this is the solar PV array basically consisting of four solar cells connected in series each with a rating of 3 volt so when we are having 3 volt 3 volt connected in series so 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 will give you 12 volt at the output so this solar PV array that is being designed will be giving you 12 volt output and consequently this 12 volt is increased to a suitable value with respect to a boost converter so we will be increasing the voltage uh, by suitably selecting the value of LNC and uh, based on the duty ratio so the duty ratio is controlled by the perturb and observe algorithm by using MPPT technique so we'll be writing a code with respect to a MATLAB function so this is a MATLAB function and we'll be double clicking on this and writing the the program over there so how do we write the program that is one of the major challenges that everyone might face it's very very simple so uh, look at the algorithm so this is the algorithm we'll be measuring V and I we'll be computing the value of power that is uh, the product of voltage and current you'll be getting DP is equal to P of K minus P of K minus 1 so that is basically P of K is the instantaneous value K minus 1 is the previous value again we'll be finding out DV if DP is greater than 0 and we'll go uh, with respect to if it is yes it will go to this block if it is no it will go to this block and it will increase or decrease the value of the duty ratio so how do we write a code for this type of a system it's very very simple so this is the code that is to be written so we're calling a function and uh, these are the variables capital P stands for instantaneous value capital V stands for instantaneous value small one stands for the uh, previous value so that is why it is denoted by small p and small v respectively we'll be finding dp is equal to p minus p and dv is equal to v minus v so one important thing to note is that uh, the product that is v into i is already determined in the matlab model and i'm not including that in the code that will be externally done by using uh, a product block in simulink so this function will start off after measuring the value of p so it starts off from this point that is dp is equal to p minus uh, p of k minus 1 so like this we'll be writing I'll be taking the value of duty ratio initially to be equal to 0.58 so D stands for duty ratio if DP is greater than 0 if this condition is there it goes to if block that is DV is less than 0 it increases the value of the duty ratio by 0 0.05 you can increase based on your requirement with respect to the system that you develop again if it is uh, no it goes to this particular block if if the main block itself is no then it goes to the else condition and checks for the if condition within it that is DV is less than 0 D is equal to D minus 0.05 0.05 and else it it goes to this block that is d is equal to d plus 0 0.05 again it ends the statement and comes out of the loop so this is the code that we have to write so how to build such a system let's go block by block let us first design the pv array then let us go to the boost converter and last let us come to the matlab function program where we have to write this code and then we'll interface that with the boost converter and check the output so let's get started let's go to matlab and start our simulation over there Alright, here we are in MATLAB. So click on Simulink Library Browser and search for the components that we want. At the first place, we will be requiring a constant block. So search for constant and it will be available right at the top. So add that block. And once that is done, uh, we will be requiring a solar cell. So search for solar cell and add that block as well. So once that is added, so one important observation here, the blocks that are there in blue are basically systems with respect to the physical uh, quantity. So they are uh, physical quantities are the ones that are associated with with real life object for example a sensor for that matter all of these are physical quantities and we need to convert it to a form that is suitable for the MATLAB and Simulink to accept so how do we do that I will be telling you uh, in detail so at the first place we need to search for a converter so that basically converts physical system to Simulink and Simulink to physical systems respectively so search for converter and it will be available uh, scroll a little down and uh, you will be getting uh, the converter over here this is basically physical systems to Simulink converter and this is Simulink to 
physical system converter i'll be explaining the context of the requirement uh, based on uh, the point at which it can be utilized so add these two blocks so once this is done we'll be requiring a voltage sensor search for voltage sensor and add this block as well and uh, we also need a current sensor so search for current sensor and add this block uh, once uh, we've added these blocks, we will be requiring a scope in order to see the output waveform. Search for scope and add this block as well. So once this is also added, we will be requiring an electrical reference, which is basically the ground for the circuit. So add the ones that are there in blue. And uh, once this is also done, we will be requiring a variable resistor. So search for variable resistor and add this block. So we have uh, placed all the components with respect to the solar module. So let us place them in appropriate positions so that uh, we can get started with respect to the circuit uh, simulation of the solar PV array system. So double click on the solar cell at the first place and uh, we'll be changing the voltage to be equal to three volt and uh, observe one important thing here it asks for irradiance so it is thousand rating over here irradiance basically is the amount of radiation that the solar energy gives you to the solar cell so we will be giving this input through a constant block that is thousand watt per meter square will be given through the constant block over here so click on ok let it be three volt so we'll be copy pasting this copy paste control c and then control v we'll be pasting that right at the bottom uh, underneath them and i'll be uh, connecting it in this particular fashion i'll be connecting it over here and then i'll be connecting it here now double click on this block as i told you we need to give an irradiance of about thousand so it takes that value uh, directly and i'll be giving it to this particular point if you carefully observe i'm not able to give because this is a simulink library browser like this is a simulink block and this is a physical quantity that's associated with the real world so i need to change it in a form that is suitable so we need a simulink to physical system converter so scroll this down and uh, connect it here connect it here so this is basically simulink to ps physical system converter so we will be able to achieve the conversion over here once this is also done i'll be connecting this in this particular fashion connecting this in this particular fashion and uh, once all of these are done i'll be requiring a variable resistor i'll be connecting it between these two points in this particular fashion and uh, the variable resistor that is there i will be uh, giving uh, a constant block here because we have to enter the value of the resistor so how do we do that rotate this in this particular fashion and we need again a physical uh, constant to a physical system converter so that is basically this block so rotate this in this particular fashion connect it over here so once this is done we are giving 1000 ohms as the value of the load that we have to give and this is the voltage measurement block that has to be connected between these two blocks and uh, once this is also connected we will be giving it to a scope before giving it to a scope we need uh, to convert this in a suitable form that the simulink will accept so we'll be using physical system to a simulink converter so connect it in this particular fashion give it to this particular block so it should be uh, coming at this point and you'll be connecting it over here so once this is done we need to measure the current with respect to the circuit how do we measure the current we measure it by connecting in series with respect to the circuit the measurement block should be in series with respect to the circuit that you are measuring the current for and i again need this block isn't it so control c control v uh, place this at the top in this particular fashion scope control C control V place this at the top in this particular fashion so I'll be connecting the electrical reference over here so if you don't have an electrical reference again it will throw you an error and you'll not be getting the required output so be very careful apart from that we need one more important block which is basically the heart of the circuit so it's basically the compiler with respect to the physical systems so search for solver configuration and add this block so I'll be connecting this to any portion of the circuit it will work just it should be connected such that it touches our circuit once this is done we are getting uh, we'll be getting 12 volt at the output terminals so we can cross verify by simulating them but uh, i am very confident that we'll be getting 12 volt here so let us get into our uh, boost converter uh, block so what do we need for boost converter we will be requiring a dc voltage source uh, but here we are not going to use a normal dc voltage source we'll be going for a controlled voltage source so the reason because uh, the signal that we get from the pv array should be given to this point and consequently that will be applied as the voltage level with respect to the boost converter apart from that we need a series rlc branch search for series rlc branch and add this block and once that is done we will be requiring a mosfet switch search for mosfet and uh, you will be have you'll have to scroll down and add this block as well 
we also uh, require a diode so search for diode and choose the ones that are there in black uh, with respect to power electronic applications uh, so be very careful with respect to them because there are the ones that are available in blue as well so once this is also done we will be requiring a voltage measurement block in order to measure the voltage so search for voltage measurement block and add that as well so apart from that we will be requiring a scope in order to measure the output waveform search for scope and add this block in this particular fashion so once uh, this is done let us connect the circuit with respect to the boost converter in this particular fashion let us rearrange the components first and then let us connect them with respect to the circuit so rotate this and uh, i'll be double clicking on this and disabling the measurement port and i'll be double clicking on the diode block and disabling the measurement port with respect to it as well and uh, i'll be taking the signal from this point um, and once that is done, I'll be giving it to an inductor. So double click on this, choose an inductor and I'll be choosing its value to be equal to 100 uh, into 10 power minus 6. So enter that value. So be very careful with respect to uh, the values. So a design procedure is already explained with respect to boost converter in open loop and uh, closed loop mode. So you can watch those videos. It is always available in our channel and I'll be giving it to this in this particular fashion. And uh, once that is done, diode should be connected in the forward direction over here between these two blocks. And uh, we also need another uh, capacitor and resistor blocks. So copy paste this, rotate this by using Control R and uh, use a capacitor. Choose the value of capacitor to be equal to 1000 micro and connect it between these two points. So once this is done, I will be uh, con copy pasting this and I'll be choosing a resistor with a value of 100 ohms. Once that is also done, I'll be connecting it as a load with respect to the capacitor and I'll be connecting it to a scope. Before that, we need to measure the voltage between the load terminals. I'll be connecting at this point and I will be giving it to the scope in this particular fashion. So once all of these are done, uh, we have to now start off with the perturb and observe algorithm uh, based on MPPT technique. So we'll be adding the blocks with respect to it. So how do we add them? What are the blocks that we want? We want FCN basically, that is basically uh, the MATLAB function block that we have to use. So you can also search by MATLAB function. So search by MATLAB function and you'll be getting it over here. So add this block. And once this is done, we will be requiring a unit delay. So go for discrete block directly. So you, you can directly go to discrete over here because there are a lot of unit delay blocks and we have to add the ones with respect to discrete. So add this block, the de delay block. And once uh, that is also added, so we will be requiring a repeating sequence uh, in order to compare it with respect to the duty cycle of uh, the value that we are getting add the repeating sequence block and add the relational operator block as well. So once this is done, uh, relational operator, we will be requiring a product block in order to multiply the voltage and current at the output terminal. So search for product and add this block as well. So we have added all the blocks with respect to our requirement. So let us place them in appropriate position so that we can start off with respect to the MPPT algorithm that we have to do. So we will uh, be increasing the size of this so that we can clearly see what are the variables that are associated with them. So double click on this function and you will be getting uh, this particular window. And over here you have to write the code. Uh, as I showed you the code over there. So be very careful with respect to writing the code. Just type them as it is there with respect to the code that is shown i'll be copy paste so i'll be selecting them and i'll be copy pasting at this point so once that is done click on run model it checks for any errors with respect to the model that you have so if if in case there is any error it will show you the line numbers in which there is error that is uh, with respect to the circuit so uh, over here it is uh, throwing an error that there is no power give block so we have not added power give block so what we have to do is close this window let us go to our circuit so this is our circuit so we'll be adding a power give block and and again let us simulate it so power give block is basically a compiler for the power electronic and uh, power system applications that is for the blocks that are there in black so add this block and place this uh, in this particular position and once that is done double click on this and now let us run the model let us check if it throws any error with respect to the system that we have developed so if there is no error error then uh, there will be no uh, issues with respect to the program that we have written we can uh, close this window and continue with our simulation so if you observe there is no error uh, it has come back to its original position where you click on start simulation this is a clear indication that there is no error so once that is done close the window and now let us connect with respect to our circuit so at the first place i told you we need to 
multiply the voltage and current values and that will be done in simulink so connect this at this point and connect this at this point and give it to the power block over here so product of voltage and current is given to the power block we need a unit delay why is it so because we need the previous value this is the instantaneous value and we need the previous value for that we'll be using a delay block so that we'll be getting the previous value so small p is associated with the previous value as a result we will be using a delay block again we need another delay block with respect to voltage as well connect the voltage with respect to this point that is the voltage that is measured and uh, i'll be using a unit delay for the previous value again we need it with respect to the output as well the duty ratio so connect it at this point and give it the unit delay in this particular fashion and once this is done one of the most important uh, is blocks is the repeating sequence i'll basically be generating a triangular uh, waveform over here 1.0.5 and then 1 divided by 1000 so i'll be explaining why is it in this particular fashion a lot of students have confusions with respect to this block so click on ok so now if you see the shape of uh, the repeating sequence has changed it to triangular so one of the most important aspects is to observe why is it in this particular fashion so uh, just observe my cursor let us say this is a waveform and it starts from this point as reference so how does a triangular waveform look like it goes to a peak comes back to zero isn't it so when it is at the starting point it will be zero goes to a maximum value let us say it is equal to one comes back to zero so it is written as zero one zero so zero goes to a higher value comes back to zero as a result it is zero one zero so how is it with respect to time values so it starts from zero goes to a higher value comes back to another point with respect to x-axis it is time so it starts from zero and goes to a maximum value maximum value is basically half of the overall time if we assume the overall time at this point is equal to t then half will be equal to t by 2 that is nothing but 0.5 times t so i am dividing it by 1000 in order to convert it to milliseconds so 0 0.51 is the value that we have to enter I hope this is understood. This is based on SPWM technique as well. So we have done a lot of videos with respect to SPWM technique and uh, I've explained in detail over there. You can watch those videos in order to get a clear picture, a complete picture with respect to these type of circuits. I'll be comparing it with the value that we are getting over here with respect to D and I'll be giving it to the duty ratio over here in this particular fashion. So once this is done, one of the most important things to remember is we have to convert in terms of discrete domain because if you see the algorithm, it is p of k minus 1 so k stands for discrete domain so convert it with respect to discrete so that we don't miss out on the output so now we'll be clicking on run simulation and check what is the output that we are getting so click on run simulation it does take some time for uh, the simulation to take place so let us uh, hold on for some time clicking on the scope so we are getting voltage which is greater than 100 volt and which is exactly what we are supposed to get so boost operation is achieved and if you carefully observe it keeps changing its value over here the output voltage changes at the point with respect to the maximum power tracking that is obtained so you can zoom in the specific portion of the waveform and you're approximately getting around 102.5 volt so this is uh, exactly what we are supposed to get however there is a larger amount of ripple which can be reduced by suitably selecting the capacitor value so this is how we'll be simulating uh, the circuit uh, with respect to perturb and observe algorithm for mppt so in case you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below if you like this video please do like it share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates thanks for watching this video meet you guys in another video thank you